valiant but futile attempt to justify their lawless state by talking about the ICCPR Article 4. And that article on the <laughs> International Covenant, I believe, of Civil and Political Rights talks about in <coughs> certain derogation of certain responsibilities on, on these issues can be uh, can occur when a state invokes Article 4, a national emergency. First of all, I'll talk more about it, but first of all, by the terms of that, I'll talk in a bit, moment of why this is completely inapplicable to crimes against humanity in criminal cases like this. But even by the terms of that, the covenant requires that the state officially declare Requiert a state of emergency. Nowhere in the 550 pages of Munchia's brief do they ever even claim that the DK officially declared a state of emergency. The general comment to that convention says in paragraph, general comment 29, Paragraph 2, before a state moves to invoke Article 4, the state must have officially proclaimed a state of emergency. The latter requirement is essential for the maintenance of the principles of legality and rule of time, the rule of law, at times when they are needed most. <coughs> this is important, and very important. National emergencies is a time when law is most needed, when you want to control the state from abusing citizens, and overstepping its bounds. Some of the cases that the Minchia team cites have nothing to do, of course, with killing people, executing people without any judicial process. The kind of derogation Le when a state of emergency de is officially declared are things like they cite the case of the European Court of Human Rights of Aksoy versus Turkey. Aksoy Turkey. In that case, Dans cette affaire, it, in, the court, the European Le Court, accepted cour the Turkish government's argument that the PKK the PKK terrorist activity in Southeast Turkey had undoubtedly created in that region a, quote, region, public emergency threatening the life of the nation. They accepted that. And the court still found, in Pourtant, that case, dans le même, la même affaire, the Turkish government wanted la, to hold suspect 14 en fait, suspects for 14 days before they saw a judge, before judicial intervention. Pendant quatre, the court quatre jours, des that was not de permitted. Juge, mais In the case of Nure Sen, the same ruling, when there was an 11-day detention without seeing a judge, Et without ensuite, any judicial intervention. Autre arrêt, même décision pour une demande de Your Honor, the, the laws that we're applying here, crimes against humanity and the laws of armed conflict, they apply in, in armed conflict. They apply at times when la, there is a real national emergency. Uh, it, would, it would defeat the very purpose of the laws of armed conflict to say that law is suspended during an armed conflict. Et Just the opposite is true. Productive de dire que le, les lois de la guerre sont suspendues par, en temps de, General de, Comment 29 de goes on to say in paragraph 11, Les interprètes signalent que l'accusation lit extrêmement vite et que c'est extrêmement uh, dense et donc l'interprétation s'en ressent can never be applied in a case like this, in a criminal case. You cannot apply it. It's not meant to be applied. Paragraph 11 Paragraph says 11. state parties Les may in no circumstances in invoke Article 4 of the Covenant du pacte as justification des actes for acting in violation of humanitarian law or peremptory norms norme of international law. For instance, Par exemple, by imposing collective punishments des through arbitrary deprivations des of liberty. De liberté. An arbitrary de deprivation of liberty is arresting someone with no judicial process, exactly what occurred at each of the security centers in this case. Comme le cas de tous les de and then it goes on to say, or ensuite, by deviating from fundamental principles of fair trial, including the presumption of innocence, which of course we know 
there was no presumption of innocence, and there was no trial during the DK regime. As Doik and many others have said, in DK, all arrested were presumed guilty. Paragraph 12 says, if action conducted under the authority of a state constitutes a basis for individual criminal responsibility for a crime against humanity by persons involved in that action, Article 4 of the Covenant cannot be used as justification. So, that is saying exact, that's exactly what Nunchi has attempted to do. Even though they didn't declare a state of emergency, he's trying to say that they are invoking Article 4 as a basis to avoid individual criminal responsibility. It's simply not permitted. Your Honors, the Geneva Conventions Ensuite, les deal, de uh, particularly common Article 3 of those Geneva Conventions, have been described in the international jurisprudence, dans la jurisprudence such as the Celebici Appeal Chamber Judgment, Celebici as the absolute appel. minimum standards under customary international law that apply to all conflicts, internal or international. They called it a minimum yardstick, which reflects elementary considerations of humanity. And what does article, common Article 3 say? Common Article 3, common to all of the Geneva Conventions. It says, to this end, the following acts are and shall remain prohibited at any time and in any place whatsoever with respect to persons taking no active part in the hostility, hostilities, including members of armed forces who have laid down their arms in those places or to combat by sickness, wounds, detention. First, a violence to life and person, in particular murder of all kinds, mutilation, cruel treatment, and torture. And then skipping to paragraph D. Remember, this applies to even soldiers in detention. The passing of sentences and the carrying out of executions without previous judgment pronounced by a regularly constituted court affording all the judicial guarantees which are recognized as indispensable by civilized peoples. Again, we know there were no judgments, no courts, no process in any of the detention centers, the execution sites in the DK regime. A couple, another case cited in the Nunchea brief Nunchea is a, another European affaire, Court of Human Rights case, Ilashku. And in that case, the court Ilashku. reiterated that, ici, quote, even in the most difficult circumstances, such as the fight against terrorism and organized crime, the Convention, and there they're talking about the European Convention of Human Rights, prohibits in absolute terms torture and inhumane or degrading treatment. It said that no derogation from it is permissible even in the event of a public emergency threatening the life of a nation. <laughs> Now, Your Honors, it's not surprising if there was opposition to the DK regime. It was a regime that had impoverished its people. People were starving. People were enslaved, working in horrible conditions. And the regime we acknowledge was wildly unpopular. No one had chosen that regime. It had come to power through armed force and deception pretending that it was, uh, that King Sihanouk was at the front when the CPK intended always to sideline Sihanouk. But Your Honor, the fact that unpopular, that dictatorships may be unpopular 
dictatorships that allow no elections des dictatures n'autorisant pas d'élection peuvent être populaires. Cela ne veut pas dire qu'elles peuvent tuer leurs opposants with no legal leur process, just so that they can de façon extrajudiciaire, rien que pour se maintenir au pouvoir. There clearly was some resistance to the DK regime. We absolutely acknowledge it. That's, that's been in the evidence. So we had, for example, the, for example, the Cham in Krach Chimar, uh, Kopal, who took up swords and knives fighting against guns and heavy weapons for the religion. They resisted the regime. Long Sat was an East Zone cadre. I don't know if you remember him. I think he said he was head of the medical unit. And after all of his commanders were called to a meeting on the 25th of May, slaughtered by K-pop forces, he took to the forest with a group of people to resist, to stay alive, the main reason, to resist what he called the Pol Pot coup. Uh, there are other examples. Il y a examples. For example, uh, <coughs> Michael Vickery in his book, Vickery, who's an author of the defense, likes to quote a lot. Uh, he talks about a revolt Il in Chikrang district in sector 106, which revolted in April 1977 after a rumor spread that Sihanouk was about to return and Sihanouk the regime was about to fall. In response to that revolt, according to Vickery, the Khmer Rouge killed 8 to 10,000 people. And he also talked about a Khoi village, which is an ethnic minority that he said revolted and the entire population of 700 was killed. And there certainly were other individuals who resisted the Khmer Rouge regime. But in talking about these people and in talking about S21, in the beginning of their brief, the uh, brief quotes from Chandler. Chandler, of course, is the person who came up with talking about the Manichaean, Manichaean narrative that he said was a convenient, uh, and sometimes conveniently merged what the Khmer Rouge wanted people to believe with what the Vietnamese wanted them to believe. But he said this about the, the uh, S21, I think it's very interesting. Chandler said, using the words guilty or innocent to describe the prisoners at S21 is misleading. Using these words lends judicial legitimacy to a macabre project whereby all the prisoners regardless of their actions and before they started talking, were condemned to death. This, I'm going to finish after I read this quote for the day, Mr. President, just another minute. Chandler said, procedures followed at S21, indeed, sometimes seem to have been inspired by the Red Queen in Alice in Wonderland, or by Kafka's The Trial. At another level, those prisoners genuinely guilty of opposing DK might well deserve to be seen in hindsight as heroes, while those victims who were innocent of opposition and thus sometimes complicit in the regime's guiding ideas and practices should not necessarily be honored as law-abiding citizens of a humane regime swept up in error by a response of judicial system. But evidence shows resistance, even dissent, was very limited because of the terror imposed by the regime. If you'd like, Mr. President, I could break that. President, thank you. It is now the appropriate time for Merci. the gentleman. The, the chamber will resume its hearing on Thursday, 22nd, June 2017, starting from 9 a.m. tomorrow. The 
The we continue to hear the closing arguments of K002-02, and tomorrow is the time for the co prosecutor to resume the rebuttal in the morning, and the chamber will not hold its hearing in the afternoon. Please be informed. Security personnel are instructed to bring the two accused, Nun Chi and Kyu Sampon, back to the ECCC detention facility and have them returned into the courtroom tomorrow before 9 a.m. The court is now adjourned.